In this video, I'm going to give my best attempt at explaining how you break apart ionic compounds. One of the skills that we need for writing net ionic equations is being able to break apart ions, and that gives a lot of students um, quite a bit of trouble. So we're going to just attempt to work backwards from how we originally wrote ionic compounds. I've got quite a few examples to work with. The first one is potassium chloride. And if you remember from what we did before, uh, potassium chloride is made up of two ingredients. It's made up of potassium and it's made up of chlorine. Well, we need to break everything up just like this. Um, how we determine the charges was using the periodic table. So if you go back in time and you look at the periodic table, how I know potassium's charge is I find it right here. It's in group one which means it has one valence electron. I know that potassium is a metal, and I know that because it is to the left of the stair step right here, and everything to the left of the stair step is a metal. And the other thing that I know about metals is that they lose their valence electrons. And when you lose electrons, it actually gives you a positive charge. You are, you are subtracting a negative, and when you subtract a negative, that makes a positive. That seems like a lot of work, but well, I mean, that's what we're doing. Chlorine, uh, to make the chloride ion. Chlorine is in group 7A, it's right here, and that means it has seven valence electrons. It is to the right of this little stair step, the dark stair step on the paper, which means that it is a nonmetal. And nonmetals, we learned, gain electrons. They remember gain to get to eight, and if it has seven, it needs to gain one. You are adding a negative one to something that has a charge of zero. So that makes chlorine's charge a negative one. I'm not going to keep explaining it in quite as much detail as we keep going. So KCl would break up into K plus 1 and Cl negative 1. Now, sometimes in our reactions, you'll see like in a balanced equation a coefficient in front of it. So if you would see something like 2 KCl, what that means is you have, you have 2 of this whole group you have basically KCl and another KCl. If each one of these breaks up into this, it would just simply double everything. So two KCl's would make two K plus ones, and it would make two Cl minus ones. If this was a three, then that would become three of each of those because each time they break up into one K plus one and one Cl minus one. Now let's look at magnesium oxide. There's two things that make this up. The cation is going to be magnesium, and the anion is the oxygen, the oxide. Uh, the magnesium, magnesium's in group two. That means it's gonna have a charge of plus two. It's got two valence electrons to lose. Oxygen's going to gain two, so it's going to be a, a negative two. If I just have one of those, then it breaks up into that. If I have, if, if one of these breaks up into that, if there was a coefficient in front of it, like a 3 or a 4 or a 2, I would just multiply this to equal whatever it broke up into. This time I'm just going to make it like a 3. So then I would just multiply both of those by 3. It make, breaks up into 3 magnesium 2 pluses and 3 oxygen negative 2. K2O, well... Same thing we've been doing, but this one has a subscript. This breaks up into potassium and oxygen. I need to figure out the charges next. Potassium is a plus one. We did it to begin with. It was our first one over here in potassium chloride. Oxygen, we just figured out, is a negative two. But this one has a subscript in it. So what that means is that this actually took two potassiums in order to cancel out that negative two. Remember, the way we wrote the formulas was to make their charges add up to zero. And it takes two plus ones to cancel out a negative two. The, the simplest way to write it, though, is, is you could work it out this way, but the way that you would write it in net ionic equations is you would break it up like this. You would, you would put the multiplier in front of it. You would give it a coefficient. You would write two K plus one plus O negative two. And I can put the plus signs between these other ones if, if that helps for clarification purposes. Magnesium chloride. Well, we've worked with all of these. I chose kind of the same elements again and again. Magnesium is a plus two. We determined that over here. 
chlorine we did at the beginning, chlorine is going to be a, a Cl negative 1. Um, but there's two chlorines. There has to be two chlorines in this because if it's one of each, it doesn't add up to zero. So instead of writing it down again, I'm just going to put the multiplier in front of it. That it'll make two chlorine with the negative one charge and it'll make one magnesium with a positive two charge. Then I have some examples using uh, polyatomic ions because that can kind of um, trip some people up as well. You know that it has a polyatomic ion and that it's not going to break up into three individual things. The biggest no-no here is that this is not going to break up into sodium and nitrogen and oxygen. That is a big fat no. And how I know that is I see an ionic compound. I know it's ionic because it has a cation. It's got a metal and then it's got um, the anion over here. I know that it's a polyatomic because it's got three ingredients. I see sodium and nitrogen and oxygen. And when you see three ingredients like that, that means that you need to be using your polyatomic ion table that's in your reference table to figure out what it is. So if you have it memorized, that's great. But if you don't, then you use the, the polyatomic table. So again, most polyatomics are negative which means that the NO3 is your most likely combo if you don't know. So you start looking down through this table, you'll find it right there. So right there is one of my ions. I realize that that's a little blurry on the screen. Um, but nitrate, it says, is NO3 with a negative one charge. You can write the one or not. That means that sodium is my other ion. I don't need to do anything else for this one. The table tells me what the charge is. For sodium, um, well, it's a group one metal which means that it's going to lose one valence electron. I can write the one, but I don't have to. I don't have any other coefficients up here, so I leave it just like that. It breaks up into one sodium ion and one nitrate ion. This one's sodium sulfate. Well, it's sodium again. It breaks up into sodium and then the sulfate. To figure out its charge, you go down the table. It's right there towards the bottom. It's a negative two. Well, this one does have a subscript. It's got a 2. That means that there's 2 of the Na pluses that's necessary to make my charges add up to 0. That's one way to check to see if you broke these up correctly is if they add up to 0. MgSO4. We were using Mg earlier. Mg is a plus 2. Sulfate we just did. It's SO4 negative 2. There's no extra coefficients, or no extra subscripts, I'm sorry. Some people, too, while I'm thinking about it, will want to make this 4. They want to put it out front. But remember, it doesn't go there. What We did these earlier, so for a, a longer explanation, remember what this means is that sulfate is a sulfur with four oxygen atoms bonded around it. And the whole thing has a negative 2 charge. Like, this whole thing travels as a group, so I can't break it up over here in my, in my breaking apart of the ions. It has to stay together as a group. Uh, the way this is actually written is that it would be one magnesium ion, and then it would be one of these if you actually want to draw the thing out. This got its extra two electrons from the magnesium. My last one is magnesium nitrate. Magnesium, again, is a plus two. We've been using it for a while. But this time, my nitrate has parentheses around it. Okay, it doesn't change anything about nitrate. It's still NO3 negative. But what the parentheses mean is that I have two of those groups. Um, the reason that we have to have the parentheses is that if I don't, it will be written like that. And that looks like 1N and 32 oxygens. And that's not what this means. It's it's two of this whole group. If you want a, a drawn out explanation, basically the nitrate would have um, oxygens around it, such as this. I hope to goodness I drew this correctly really quickly. Um, it travels as a group, and if it travels as a group, then you have to have the, the whole group stay together. I can't have 32 oxygens and one nitrogen. It would actually be two of those whole groups. You know, it would have all the dots back around it again. And so 
I have to represent it with the parentheses. So I just put the two in front of it to show that it's two of the whole thing.